Welcome back. Let's talk about ventilator peak and plateau pressures. First, a case. You were called to the bedside because the ventilator high pressure alarm is going off and the patient is now more hypoxemic. The patient is 50 years old with a history of COPD and admitted with ARDS. They are currently on a volume control mode of ventilation, sedated, and breathing passively on the ventilator. The ventilator screen says that the current peak pressures are in the range of 45 to 50. The oxygen saturation is 84% on 100% FiO2. How do we approach this problem? In this video, we will describe how to obtain a plateau pressure for an adult patient requiring mechanical ventilation, describe the concept of lung compliance, and identify a framework for approaching elevated peak and plateau pressures in the mechanically ventilated adult patient. Shown is an intubated patient requiring mechanical ventilation. First, let's talk about the pressure waveform on the ventilator. Shown is a sample pressure waveform for a patient on a volume control mode of ventilation. The peak inspiratory pressure is just that, the peak pressure at the end of inspiration. This pressure is determined by four major variables, inspiratory flow rate and flow pattern, airway resistance, compliance of the respiratory system, and total positive end expiratory pressure, or PEEP. For our case, if we assume that no recent changes have been made to either the inspiratory flow rate or the set PEEP, a change in peak inspiratory pressure is due to a change in airway resistance, a change in compliance of the respiratory system, or a combination of the two. So how do we determine if an increase in the peak inspiratory pressure is due to a change in resistance or compliance? We perform an inspiratory hold or pause. When an inspiratory hold is performed, all flow in the ventilator circuit is stopped briefly for 0.5 to 1 second at the end of inspiration. Remember the four variables that determine peak inspiratory pressure in the upper right hand corner of our ventilator screen. By briefly pausing flow, we remove the variables of flow and airway resistance. And because we set and know the PEEP, an inspiratory hold allows us to indirectly measure compliance of the respiratory system by measuring the plateau pressure the pressure in the alveoli at the end of inspiration. Compliance is the ability of a system to distend or increase in volume when a pressure is applied. As an equation, compliance C equals change in volume over change in pressure. A highly compliant system is one that can significantly increase in volume with very little pressure. On the other hand, a low compliant system is stiff and changes very little in volume when a large pressure is applied. Let's apply this equation to the lungs of a ventilated patient in the intensive care unit. For the lungs of a ventilated patient, compliance equals the tidal volume divided by the driving pressure. Driving pressure equals the plateau pressure, P plat, minus the PEEP. Therefore, compliance equals tidal volume divided by plateau pressure minus PEEP. Assuming the tidal volume and PEEP have not been changed, an increase or decrease in the plateau pressure reflects a change in compliance. A normal compliance in an individual with healthy lungs is approximately 100 milliliters per centimeter of water. Lung compliance in ARDS is typically in the range of 10 to 50 milliliters per centimeter of water. Essentially, the lower the compliance, the stiffer the lungs. Therefore, by performing an inspiratory hold, we can identify the plateau pressure and then determine if the increase in peak inspiratory pressure is due to an increase in plateau pressure, i.e. a change in compliance, or if the plateau pressure is unchanged, a change in resistance. Shown is an example of a pressure waveform with an increase in peak inspiratory pressure due to an increase in plateau pressure, as well as a pressure waveform with an increase in peak inspiratory pressure without a change in plateau pressure. Let's create a ventilator to alveoli framework for identifying specific causes of increased resistance and decreased compliance. First, resistance. Anything that decreases the diameter of the ventilator tubing, endotracheal tube, and or major airways will lead to an increase in resistance. When creating a framework and differential for problems that increase resistance, we can start at the ventilator and work towards the patient. First, any kinking or obstruction in the ventilator tubing prior to the endotracheal tube can increase airway resistance. Once we get to the endotracheal tube, if the patient is biting on the tube, and therefore decreasing the diameter of the tube, 
that can increase resistance. Moving further down, airway secretions or mucus plugs will decrease the diameter of either the endotracheal tube or the airways themselves and increase resistance. And finally, furthest down, bronchospasm will cause the airways to clamp down, again decreasing the diameter and increasing resistance. Therefore, if the increase in peak inspiratory pressure is due to an increase in resistance, one approach to diagnosing and managing the problem is ensuring the ventilator tubing is not kinked or obstructed by running the length of the tubing from ventilator to patient. Next, ensure the patient is not biting the tube, and treat by adding a bite block or increasing sedation. Next, pass the inline suction catheter into the endotracheal tube to remove any secretions or mucus plugs. Finally, in the right clinical scenario, for example asthma or COPD exacerbations, consider inhaled bronchodilators for treatment of bronchospasm. What if the increase in peak inspiratory pressure is due to an increase in plateau pressure? As we talked about earlier, the plateau pressure measures the pressure in the alveoli at the end of inspiration and is directly related to compliance. As plateau pressure increases, compliance worsens. Therefore, we need to think about acute processes that affect the alveoli, either via alveolar filling or by preventing alveolar expansion. First, Diseases that result in alveolar filling will decrease compliance. From the session on acute respiratory failure, the differential of blood, hemorrhage, pus, pneumonia and ARDS, and water, cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, like an ARDS, is useful. When managing ARDS, keeping the plateau pressure less than 30, if possible, is a key part of lung protective ventilation. Next. Any process that prevents the alveoli from expanding will increase alveolar pressure and decrease compliance. This can be broken down into intrathoracic and extrathoracic categories. The intrathoracic category includes pneumothorax and pleural effusion. In addition, autopeep will increase plateau pressure. Extrathoracic processes include abdominal compartment syndrome, ACS, and tensocytes or other fluids filling the abdomen. Note, a more chronic cause of decreased compliance is fibrotic lung disease. Acute management of an increased plateau pressure is dependent on identifying the underlying disease process. It is important to remember that elevated peak and plateau pressures can occur together, as many of the problems we discussed can coexist in the critically ill patient. Shown is the complete ventilator to alveoli framework for thinking through elevated peak and plateau pressures at the bedside. Let's go back to our initial case. An inspiratory hold is performed. The peak inspiratory pressure is found to be 45 with a plateau pressure of 24, which is unchanged from the last ventilator assessment. Suctioning is performed and a large amount of thick secretions are removed from the endotracheal tube. Immediately following suctioning, the peak inspiratory pressure decreases to 32 and the oxygen saturation improves to 94%. In this video, we described how to obtain a plateau pressure by performing an inspiratory hold on the ventilator, and how to use that information to determine whether an increase in peak inspiratory pressure is due to a change in resistance or a change in compliance of the respiratory system. Next, we described the concept of lung compliance, represented by the equation compliance equals tidal volume divided by driving pressure, plateau pressure minus PEEP. Finally, we identified a ventilator to alveoli framework for thinking through both elevated peak and plateau pressures at the bedside. Thank you for watching.